So let's learn how to import data from an Excel file and how to export data to an Excel file. And we're going to do all this with uh, SSMS. So go ahead and open up your SSMS. And here's all your databases or all my databases that I'm working with. Here's my Excel spreadsheet. I'll paste this spreadsheet into the course schedule. Otherwise, you just need to go create a spreadsheet. I called mine sample underscore Excel. This is Excel 2016, and I know that by clicking on File, Account, and I can see that it's 16 Office. And this first row contains all of the columns, titles for all the data. We have ID, first name, last name, date of birth, address 1, 2, city, state, zip, phone, and salary. I haven't done anything else to the spreadsheet. I haven't modified the data types. Actually, I am going to come into this one, into my uh, first cell, and make sure that there are no decimals on that, so it looks like that. So now we have a number there, um, and the rest is just text. So let's go ahead and go back to SSMS, and let's right mouse click on databases. We'll choose a new database, and let's give this a brand new name. And we're going to go ahead and call this database R Excel Data. R Excel Data. Click OK. You can call it anything you want. Now, right mouse click on your database and choose Tasks, Import Data. This brings up the wizard that Microsoft has to help you. Click on Next. You have to choose where the data source is. Well, our data source is a Microsoft Excel file. So I click on the down arrow and I find Excel. Click on Browse and you go find your file name. And then you choose what type of Excel file it is. Mine's a 2016. Notice right here it says first row has column names and there's a checkbox. I'm going to leave that checked because back in my spreadsheet, my first rows were the column names. So I'm going to leave that there. Click Next. And then it says, where do you want to send this data? We want to send our data to a SQL Server 11 file. There's our database server name that we're working with. Otherwise, you could click on the down arrow and go find your database server if you have more than one database server. But mine, uh, by default, came up. Yours probably will, too, unless you have more than one server. And now what we're going to do is there's our database name that we're working with. And we're going to click Next. We're going to copy data to a table. Click Next. Here's the sheet. That's the source. That's from the Google Drive uh, spreadsheet that we have out there. I'm going to give this a new name and we'll call it My Data. Click on Edit Mappings. And it says, here's the source column, here's the destination column, here's the data types. I'm going to go ahead and just click uh, uncheck nullable. I could change these data types if I wanted to right here. I'm just going to leave them the way they are. Click OK. Click Preview. That gives you an idea of what it's going to look like on the import. Click Next. We have Run Immediately Checked, so let's just click Next and Finish. goes through and it says that it worked, so go ahead and click Close. And let's go to our Database, Tables, and here's our brand new table. Right mouse click on it, select the rows, and there's the data we just brought in. Now if you didn't like uh, that format, we could come back and right mouse click and choose Design. And then we could come in and start changing our data types. Now, we could have done it on the import, but I've noticed that on the import, sometimes it's not really that great. So we got to be careful. I could make that a unique identifier. And in this case, since I've already brought the data in, it's not going to like that. So that could be something you want to worry about when you first um, set up the records. Or another thing we could do 
is we could leave that as a float right now and I could come back over to here and right mouse click insert a column and I could call this um, person ID and then you choose your unique identifier on that and we do not want that to have nulls you can come in and change these to be varchar uh, however big you want it to be I'll do the same thing on the name we'll leave that date time this will be a varchar 50 I'm going to copy and paste paste varchar 2 zip code will be a varchar 5 oh sorry I pressed the wrong key and it it jumped up uh, here let me come back down here varchar 2 or sorry 5 on the zip code phone number will be a varchar 10 and salary will leave as a float and we can save that yes go ahead and they will want us to drop and recreate because we're adding identifiers and changing all the data types so if you notice if we bring it in and then try to come back and make a lot of changes to it it really might not be very happy with us so let's go ahead and try something else we do have our data there and that worked let's come back to our database right mouse click task import data go back to our wizard go choose your data source one more time which will be the Excel browse the file we're going to use the exact same file and go ahead and choose 2016 first row has column names our output will be SQL Server 11 there's our database and we want to give it a new column name we'll call it our new table and we're going to go to edit mappings and then if you notice on here maybe we want to try making these changes within the system itself rather than doing it afterwards now sometimes I've noticed it works well sometimes it doesn't so let's see what happens if we make all these var chars and we'll leave that last one as a float click OK preview looks good next and this is saying it has to do some conversions we're like that's fine go ahead and convert it next next and finish and it goes through it makes all the changes for us let's refresh one more time over here and there is our brand new table right mouse click design and now we have our var chars rather than the uh, in var char and I could come over here and try to go ahead and insert uh, a brand new column make an identity or I could even just say instead of the identity that field right there becomes our primary key by right mouse clicking set primary key so there's a bunch of different things that you can do with this table now that you've created it so I could come here right mouse click set as a primary key notice it automatically turned that off um, maybe I don't want that to be float could I go ahead and change that to int let's do a save it says nope you can't do it so this is something you need to be cautious about when you're first trying to import data it can be a little sloppy so you need to know what you're importing and make sure you do all the conversions that um, you wanted to do in the beginning and that's how you could import data from Microsoft Excel into SQL Server now let's say we wanted to take some data and export it how could we do that well let's say let's go use one of our databases we already have we have our little basketball database and here's our tables that we have we have a player table right so if I right mouse click on player and I take a look at these different things that I can do 
I don't really see any type of task associated with turning that data into an Excel file. However, if you go back to the database and right mouse click on it and choose task, now we can export data. Use the wizard again. What data source do we want to use? And we want to go ahead and use a SQL 11 with our database server. There's our database we want to work with. Click Next. What's our output? Our output is going to be Microsoft Excel. And we can go give it a path name. Let's give it a name. Our new data. It doesn't exist. I'll click Open. And it will actually create that file for us when we run it. You can specify the format of the Excel you want to work with. A lot of times it seems like the older versions of Excel seem to import and export easier. But we'll go ahead and try 2016. First row will have the column names. Let's see what happens. Click Next. We want to copy data. Click Next. We want to move this table to that sheet, this table to that sheet, and this table to that sheet. You can see the mappings for each one of those if you wanted to. You can look at a preview, and it shows how the data is going to come in. Click Next. Ignore the errors for right now. In fact, we're going to come over here and just say ignore, ignore, next. And we're going to go ahead and run immediately, next, and finish. And it's going through and trying to store that data. And now we're trying to store to a Google Drive. And maybe that makes a difference. And we're copying data. It says it looks like it worked. Five rows transferred, three and five. Let's close. Let's go back to Excel. We'll do a file open. And when I click on my browse, there's our new Excel file. We're going to go ahead and trust it. And there's our different sheets. And there's our different tables. And if you notice, the first column became the column fields from the database table. And it brought those in for us. And there's our sheets. So pretty exciting that we can do all that. Uh, one thing if you notice, we have some little errors here or warnings. And you could just do a convert to number on each one of those if you really wanted those to be a number. And I'm just doing that by clicking in the cell, clicking on the warning sign, and doing a convert to number. And that now does the conversion for us. And that's how you take data from a SQL Server database and all the tables and bring it into an Excel spreadsheet.